Madam Commissioner, all to order. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Evans, safety instructions, please. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to call on Ms. Natalie Bess, our Deputy County Manager, to give us our safety instructions. To provide for the safety of those attending this meeting, please listen to the following instructions in case of an emergency. First, please take a moment to note where your exits are. If an emergency arises that prompts us to evacuate, please exit this room in a quick and orderly manner through one of the two exterior doors, one to your right and the other behind you. Once you exit the building, please safely cross Granville Street to our parking lot to be safely away from the building. Our staff will help provide direction and assistance. In the case of a tornado warning, please exit this room and gather in the hallway where we will remain until it is safe to exit. In the event of an active shooter in the building, if there is an accessible escape path, please run and try to evacuate the premises. If you can't evacuate, please find a place to hide where you are less likely to be found and lock any doors that you can. As a last resort, and only if your life is in imminent danger, please fight. Our staff will provide additional assistance on what to do. Thank you for your attention. God, we give thanks for today, a joyful day to rejoice and be glad. As we share together in this meeting, give us a mind to serve our constituents with humbleness. And thank you for the privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. You have in your package the minutes of the previous meeting. The additions are correct. If none, if you have a motion. Second. Second. Question. All in favor, let it be known by the vote of aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Mr. Chairman, if I may interrupt you for a moment. Um, as a recommendation of Commissioner Webb, we thought it would be fitting to have a moment of silence to remember those young people from our county that recently lost their lives in that tragic accident, if that's okay with you. That's perfectly okay. And Commissioner Webb is going to read the names of, of those young people. Commissioner Webb? Yes, sir. And, and also, uh, as a board, we would certainly like for our community to continue to remember the family of these young people that were tragically taken from us this past Thursday. J.T. Winstead, Devin Wilson, Madison Wilson, and Abby Foster from over in neighboring Farmville.
Ms. Evans, come back. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. If you will allow, I will read through my budget message uh, for the benefit of the public um, to consider our proposed budget for this fiscal year. So submitted herein is the Edgecombe County recommended budget for FY22. The budget is balanced in its entirety as required by the North Carolina Local Government Budget and Fiscal Control Act. Uh, we have approached the preparation of the budget with the following goals in mind. Balancing the budget without a tax increase. Making cuts where possible without compromising operations and services. Addressing critical capital needs. Addressing critical needs of key outside agencies as much as possible. And providing a reasonable cost of living increase. The proposed Avalorum tax rate for FY21-22 is $0.95 cents per $100 which is no ch uh, change from the current year. One cent generates approximately $343,000. The county's proposed budget for FY22 totals $81,973,867, including our enterprise funds, which are water and sewer and solid waste. The proposed budget is an increase of $6,529,056, or 8.7%, from the original budget of the current year. The proposed budget includes a fund balance appropriation of $8,483,245 from general fund, which is slightly down from the current year's original fund balance appropriation of $8,753,824. The main contributor to the budget increase is the addition of emergency medical services with a net increase of $4,084,422. <laughs> Other contributors, in, contributors include rising health insurance claims, the cost of living increase, additional costs for outside agencies, and additional debt service. We have received notice that we will be allocated $9,980,000 in total of American Rescue Plan, or ARP funds, half within the next 30 days. One eligible use of funds is to cover the cost of staff that are involved in response to the COVID-19 public health emergency. Based on the guidelines we receive, we anticipate that ARP funds can be substituted for portions of salaries in health department, emergency services, and maintenance totaling $2,059,275. This will further reduce the outlay of fund balance for next fiscal year. I will cover now some key budget highlights. First, regarding revenue. We expect our tax collection rate to end this year at at least 95%, which is above the 94.5% from last fiscal year. You will recall that we saw our collection rate decline from 95.82% in FY19. We believe the cause was the COVID-19 pandemic's impact on citizens' ability to pay. Though sales tax revenues have been trending upward since FY17 and well above our conservative budget estimates, we do anticipate ending this fiscal year almost $385,000 below FY20. However, what we have collected so far this fiscal year, or eight, which is $8,544,911, is well above the $6,655,000 we budgeted. I have increased the budget for sales tax for FY22 to be truer to collections and to mitigate the impact of fund balance appropriated. That conservative budget is still below what we will likely receive. Personnel. A cost of living adjustment of 2% is included in this budget. The cost of the COLA is approximately $530,000, including benefits. I'm pleased to share that we do not have an increase in our premium cost for health insurance. This budget does include a 3% increase in allocation for health insurance premiums in order to build up our reserve in the health insurance fund at a cost of approximately $160,000. The health plan will continue to include a health savings account or HSA option that includes a $750 contribution by the county. We will also continue to provide health screenings for all individuals covered by our plan. Individuals who choose not to participate in the screening will pay $50 per month towards the cost of their insurance. In addition to medical, dental, and life insurance, employees have a number of cafeteria plans to select from. We will also continue to offer the Health Map Rx program for staff with chronic diseases uh, who choose to participate. 
the Employment Assistance Program, or EAP, which offers counseling and other work-life services through both telephonic and face-to-face -face sessions. A wellness incentive of $250 for those meeting the waist circumference standards or making a 5% improvement in weight or waist. At the recommendation of the budget committee, $325,000 has been added to the Sheriff's Detention Center budget under salaries and related lines. This will enable the Sheriff to increase salaries for detention officers. You will recall that this is in addition to the $350,000 added to this current year's budget for salary increases in the Sheriff's office, which is maintained in this budget and inclusive of the 2% cost of living. Capital outlay. The budget includes capital outlay expenditures for county operations of $518,695, which is down by $541,305 from this year's capital outlay budget. I have included only those projects that will not be completed in the current year and to be rolled forward, as well as a few other items that are critical and needed for to be undertaken, undertaken at the start of the fiscal year. To minimize the impact of fund balance, I have listed items that are needed and ask that you reconsider in the new fiscal year. These total $633,000. Attached is a detailed list of the proposed capital expenditures. Included in debt service is $250,000 for both the final payment on the existing loan for the sheriff's vehicles purchased in 2019 as well as the first payment on a new loan to purchase approximately 15 vehicles for the Sheriff's Office. The budget for the governing board has remained mostly unchanged. There are some outside agencies that were previously budgeted here that have been moved to other lines to be more appropriately grouped with other outside agencies. Also, the recommendation of the personnel committee of the board, the stipend for the commissioners is increased by $150 per month. We just received a notice that our contract fee with the regional landfill for municipal solid waste is increasing 10%. This is driven by increased transportation costs. I'm currently reviewing a proposed rate increase that will balance the need to cover our costs, as well as maintain some competitive balance with surrounding landfills. There may be a need to also increase the solid waste fee that is billed, <coughs> excuse me, to all property owners that have a dwelling. I will have a final recommendation for you before the passage of this budget at your later meeting. At this time, we have not received notification of a water and sewer rate increase from our suppliers, Rocky Mountain and Tarver. Our current rates are sufficient to cover the cost of operations. Therefore, I recommend no change to our water and sewer rates at this time. The total requested by outside agencies is $16,010,842, which is $1,927,317 above what is allocated this current year. We received a request from two new outside agencies this year. However, with our budget constraints and the uncertainty of the impact of the pandemic, I do not recommend funding any new agencies this coming fiscal year. The total I recommend for outside agency funding is $14,492,450. This is an increase of $408,925 for outside agencies. This increase includes $120,000 to Nash County for our proportionate share of the debt service on the new elementary school to be constructed in Britain. My recommendation is that most of the agencies receive no increase from the current year's budget. The changes I do propose are based on ongoing agreements, formula calculations, and statutory requirements. The only exceptions are the following. To increase the current expense appropriation for Edgecombe County Schools by $100,000 to fund the district transition and redesign position. Also, to increase the capital outlay appropriation for Edgecombe Community College by $25,000 to cover the cost of HVAC repairs. Five volunteer fire departments are requesting an increase in their fire tax. I recommend that we call for separate public hearings for citizens, for citizens in those districts to have the opportunity to make their opinions known before taking action on, those, uh, on these increases. Uh, in conclusion, we will continue to monitor the budget closely throughout the year, save where we can, and spend only when necessary. 
I appreciate the hard work of all of our staff who were involved in this long process and thank the budget committee for your guidance and time investment. I respectfully submit this proposed budget for FY 21-22 for your consideration. Again, just to reiterate, I do recommend that you hold uh, approval on this until your June 21st meeting. That means that we will not be adopting the budget tonight. We will be adopting it later, at a later meeting. June 21st. At this time, I'd like to call for public comment. Anybody who would like to speak, please come forward and speak your name and address for the public record. Thank you. 
I spoke with the U.S. Marshals here across the state in Raleigh. And I'm only one hour away from the Edgecombe County Jail facility. We have a great partnership with the United States Marshals, generating 1.2 million. They love the Edgecombe County Detention Facility. But there's no need for us to continue to work day in, day out, with those hard-headed men and women, federal inmates, bringing in over $1.2 million. So I am prepared, Mr. Chairman, June the 22nd, to call the United States Marshal Service and have all those 40 federal inmates removed. All I'm asking is for $728,000, and the county can keep the rest with the ability to bring in another 1.2. But June the 22nd, once I leave that meeting, I'm going to get in my truck and call them, and they can come get them. So please work with me if you can. Thank you so much. Anybody else to speak? Anybody else to speak? Do you adjourn the hearing? That's all I can get to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At this time, you have a report, Mr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'd like to call Ms. Karen on the health director uh, to give the board a code 19 update.
so please let your constituents know that we're going to be going around in these areas and hanging door um, door hangers on them that have information about getting your vaccine. And then um, we're also got 21,000 mailers ready to, to send out um, to individuals in the high area to encourage them to go out and call and get a vaccine. Which we would love for them to come to the health department, but there's other places like Freedom Hill, um, OIC Family Medical Center in Fairview, their specialty center, Pine Tops Pharmacy, Rural Health and Whitaker's Biomedical Specialty Clinic, Thorn Drugs, Brian Drugs, Walgreens, and Walmart also are giving the vaccine. We still have two individuals from the vaccine um, support from the DHHS get, um, helping us administer or um, enter our um, insurance bill for the COVID vaccine advocacy. Not for the vaccine, but for the advocacy. And we still have 14 guardsmen, soldiers who are assisting us with entering CDMS and any other project that we have them to do. They have been totally awesome. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Can you tell us what the uh, total amount for administrative fees you've been at, you received? You approved that last month, I think. It's $40 um, just for COVID. Um, each injection. But you don't know the total right now. But no one ever gets billed. I don't know what the total is at this point. I know we, no, I don't know. We can follow up on that. We can follow up. Another question? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I always, as always, I, um, if you see any of public health staff around the county, make sure you thank them for the awesome job that they're doing because they love to Mr. Chairman, just to close out the COVID-19 report, I do want to, as I, as I informed the board, as, as you know, Governor Cooper, a few weeks ago through Executive Order 215, he lifted the statewide mask mandate, except for some areas including schools, child care facilities, health care facilities, and some other areas. Um, I have maintained the requirement in our buildings to wear a mask. Um, both for citizens coming in as well as for our employees. Um, and so I would recommend that we continue doing that through the month of June. Um, though we're seeing our, our numbers come down, I think uh, we'd like to see more people or our percentage of vaccinations to increase. And I think uh, you know, that extra caution is, a, is at a minimal cost to us. So I would recommend, I know the board may have wanted to have some discussion about that, but I would recommend that we continue to do this through the month of June. After that time, I think we can consider, uh, you know, going to a recommended based on your vaccination status. But I did want to bring that up in case the board wanted to have some discussion about that. I support the kinds of recommendations. So, you know, thoughts on the board. Yeah, that's what we are. Thank you. At this time, um, is there a motion to recess the regular board of commissions meeting and convene as board of equalization and review? Mm -hmm. Question? All in favor, let me know by the vote of sign. Aye. All opposed, we now stand at the board of equalization and review. I'd like to call on Mr. Evans. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to call Ms. Teresa Lewis, our tax administrator, to the podium, and she's going to walk us through closing out on our board and our process for this year. Good evening. Um, so, we like to we came and we were supposed to close out um, pending one appeal and luckily as of today we have not received any exception on that appeal and so she has accepted that value um, so what we need to do tonight is adopt the resolution finalizing our values for the 2021 tax year so that we can proceed with the tax billing um, not sure if we normally read the resolution um, but I can do so, or Mr. Peters can one. I think we read it. I think that's why we got this agenda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but I'm not opposed to it. Haven't read it. You know, they're great. Okay. Whereas in compliance with the requirements of North Carolina General Statutes 105, 285, and 105, 287, all properties, real and personal, subject to taxation in Edgecombe County, has been listed for ad valorem tax purposes as of January 1, 2021, and appraised and reappraised by actual appraisal at its true value in money in accordance with the Machinery Act of 1971 as amended 
chapter 105, General Statutes of North Carolina. And whereas the real and personal property appraisals and tax abstracts have been examined by the county assessor, generally to ascertain that the same scales of values have been used in all townships in the county, and whereas the tax assessment ratio has been abolished statewide, and appraised value of property must be used at its tax value on all real and personal property subject to taxation in the county, as provided in GS 105-283, Whereas the Edgecombe County Board of Equalization and Review, after the due notice as for proper law, duly commenced its meeting on April 5, 2021, and after taking and subscribing to the oath required by law, proceeded with the dispatch of its duty. And whereas the said Board of Equalization and Review has heard and given due consideration to all complaints and appeals that have been that have come to its attention from the taxpayers who own or control taxable property assessed for taxation in Edgecombe County with respect to the valuation of such property or the property of others. And whereas the said board has examined and reviewed the tax list of each township for the current year has listed and assessed all real and personal property subject to taxation in the county, which had been omitted from said list and brought to its attention, has corrected all errors, brought to its attention in the name of the persons subject to action to be taken on a pending appeal to this board in description of property and in the assessment and valuation of all taxable property appearing on said list. The said board has increased or decreased or left unchanged the appraised valuations. Now therefore, be it resolved by Edgecombe County Board of Equalization Review that all changes in names, descriptions, or valuations made by the said board shall be reflected upon the tax records of the county by correction, rebate, or additional charge and that when all such changes have been given effect upon the tax records and the scrolls or tax books have been checked, totaled and balanced, the same shall be and the same are hereby declared to be the permanent tax list and assessment roll of Edgecombe County for the 2021 subject to the provisions of Chapter 105 of the General Statutes of North Carolina, the 7th day of June 2021. Motion to approve. Second. 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 All in favor of that, you know, vote side aye. Aye. All opposed. Or convene or adjourn. I'm back. We're sorry. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn the board of equalization and review and reconvene regular board of commission meeting? So moved. Second. Questions. All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. aye. All opposed. We will now stand at the board of commission. Thank you. Yes. Before you leave, just want to make sure we all take all of your signatures. Want to, you can send it on my Okay. So, so that you can start with Mr. Williams. That's about that one slide that's taken around here. And we can sign it on the meeting. So, we Make sure that we At this time, it's time for public positions. If there's anybody here that would like to speak at public petition, would you please come forward and take your name and address for the public record? Anybody here to speak? No qualification. Nobody to speak? Here and not moving on to other business. Go ahead. Uh, item A under other business is uh, regarding budget amendments. I do have I think, two I'd like to draw your attention to. Uh, first one is the first one, budget amendment number one. You see the numbers at the top right corner. Uh, I just wanted to note that uh, you, you'll see this. this uh, it, we're moving funds into the juvenile detention uh, line item. Of course, you know, every year we estimate what that's going to cost based on uh, prior years. This, for every Edgecombe County resident that spends time in our juvenile detention center here in the county, the county has to pay that cost. And this year, for whatever reason, it has gone up considerably. We've had more youth and likely more days at the center. So this is actually the second uh, budget amendment that I brought before you. So um, we certainly hope that that trend uh, turns around. But just want you to uh, want to point that out to you. Um, also, budget amendment number 15. 
I just wanted to note Budget Amendment 15 is regarding, you'll see uh, the sheriff is moving funds out of uh, salary and related lines, uh, moving them into capital outlay, as he mentioned um, he was before you a few minutes ago about his need for backup vehicles. This is to be able to purchase four vehicles from the state surplus. And so just wanted you to, uh, wanted you to be aware of that. Um, I don't have any others in particular that I will point out, but I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Is there a motion to approve budget amendment? Any question? Motion to approve budget amendment? Second. 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 Question. All in favor of that, you know, by the vote, sign aye. Aye. All opposed? In the non it is approved. Consideration of calling for a public hearing on June 21st for consideration of the five district listing. Do we need to do that just on all of the uh, individuals? What, uh, what I'm asking, if you would call uh, five different public hearings all, all to be held at your June 21st meeting. What time? At 7 o'clock is what, what we we're planning for. Is there a I make motion? Do you with the motion? No, sir, I think one motion is fine, but just for the benefit of, of the public, we want to try to make sure we get as much information out about this. So there are five uh, of our volunteer fire departments that are requesting a tax, fire tax increase. They are Macclesfield, South Edgecombe, Sharpsburg or Tri-County, Battleboro or Harrison, and Sharp Point. So we want to give the citizens the opportunity to be able to um, make their views known. Is yes, there a motion to call for public hearings for those five private fire plans? June the 21st at 7 p.m. So Second. Question. All in favor of that, you know, by the vote, aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none. Public hearings are called. Next and seven. Uh, item C is regarding a fireworks display permit. This is for both the town of Macclesfield and the town of Tarboro. Tarboro is planning to have theirs on July 4th. Macclesfield on July 3rd, as you know, requires your approval before permit is authorized. Recommend to approve. Second. All in favor that they know how to vote time. Aye. Aye. All opposed here and not the off road. Okay. Item D, as you know, we have an ongoing partnership with USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service and the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services to provide related services and programs to our citizens. The agreement which establishes that relationship is due to be renewed. Attached is the proposed memorandum of agreement. Per this agreement, we will continue to provide county staff, apparently two positions, office space and related support, and fiscal management of state and federal funds that flow through our office. There are no material changes in this agreement from the current agreement. Therefore, I recommend that you approve the memorandum of agreement as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor, let me know by the vote. Aye. All opposed, here and under. It is approved. I would like to. He doesn't get a chance to come see you that often, but uh, Mr. Scott Kaiser is our soil and water director. He's one of our, our two positions that I mentioned. He is here tonight. Just want you to be aware. Let's pull down the mask. Let's so you know who you are. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Here I, I know you're going to see you. All right. Thank you. If I have a problem with the soil, can I call him to ask? Yes, ma'am. Sure, I can. I got a shrub that just died. <laughs> 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 you you didn't include the plant, you got to call extension. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a great phone. Now she's going to play. It's all in one. Everything else is growing. But I don't have a ring phone. That's what I want to do. Get out of here. Let me do it from the place. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was there. Next door. There was a vote taken on that last I think it was. She's, she's trying to get a plant. Moving on. Item E. Okay. Uh, this is regarding uh, a piece of property that the school uh, board has voted to uh, surplus. Uh, the school board has taken action to declare a surplus a parcel of 0.376 acres located on Drawn Road near Whitaker's. This is a wooded lot with no structures with a tax value of $7,000. State statute requires that the county be given the first right of refusal before disposing of the property. 
property would not meet any current need of the county. Therefore, I recommend that you decline the offer. You said it's not big enough. It's not big enough for them to go. No, sir. And it's it's not near anything of our water or sewer system that would provide any benefit for that. Recommendation to decline the offer is the motion. So moved. Question. All in favor, let you know by the vote tied. Aye. All opposed, and none. Uh, it is approved. Next. Uh, item F. Yeah. Uh, Edgecombe Martin Electric Membership Corporation is in need of an easement along the soon to be named Leonard Wiggins Parkway uh, at Kingsborough Industrial Park. This will allow them to construct and maintain a transmission line for electrical service into the park. I recommend that you approve the easement as presented. Motion. Approved. Second. Second. Question. All in favor of the vote by aye. Aye. All opposed. Here none. We have approved. G. Item G. Uh, it, it's my responsibility to annually review the county's compensation plan and make recommendations for modifications. My review of the plan involves consideration of maintaining a, a competitive compensation structure while being mindful of what our budget can sustain. Though I believe our salaries need to be raised to be more competitive with comparable positions in both the public and private sector, our budget cannot withstand that at this time. Therefore, this proposed compensation plan includes no changes. I recommend your approval of the FY21-22 compensation plan as presented. Motion. Second. Just, just seconds. Question. All in favor, let me know how to vote. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Here and nine. Next. Presented for your consideration is change order number two for the contract with Ralph Hodge Construction Company. The contract is for phase two of the extension of sewer into the vicinity of the town of Speed. The details of the change order are described in the attached document. The proposed change order adds $6,804.70 for a total cost of $1,225,514.70. I recommend that you approve the change order as presented. Motion. GIS coordinator. So I recommend that as uh, presented. Okay. Second. Second. Question. All in favor of that being on my vote is aye. All opposed. And none is approved. Next. Item J is regarding uh, contract to collect taxes for Macclesfield. Uh, the town of Macclesfield has requested that we collect their property taxes. Mr. Teresa Lewis, our tax administrator, is in agreement to provide this service. As they know, we already collect taxes for Canita, Leggett, Princeville, Sharpsburg, Speed, Whitakers, and Pine Tops. As you will see in the attached agreement, this will be for a 2% collection fee. I recommend that you approve the agreement as presented. Motion. Second. Question. Oh, one. Just be curious. Sure, because that this would be our first year billing for them, so I'm, I'm not. Uh, 
I'm sure it's not much no problem. Um, with being their municipality. My question is going to be, do we charge everybody 2%? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. There was. The second, is it? Yeah. All in favor, let me know by the vote sign. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is true. Mr. Chairman, I would ask if you would consider adding uh, uh, something. You'll see you have a supplemental item for your agenda at your place. Uh, it's regarding a change order for Highway 42 borderline relocation. Go right ahead. Uh, construction of a new bridge over the Tar River on Highway 42 at Old Sparta required that our borderline be relocated. Um, during the construction, our lines were cut and water was rerouted to those affected customers. At the completion of the bridge, new lines had to be installed. North Carolina Department of Transportation is funding this project. You previously approved a contract for Ralph Hodge construction in the amount of $165,257. Attached is change order number one that is necessary due to a subsurface obstruction. This will increase the contract by $74,581.33 for a total contract amount of $239,838.33. Uh, North Carolina DOT has approved the change order, therefore I recommend that you approve it as presented. Question before question. Any question? Does that mean they're going to pay that? Yes. So moved. Second. Question. <laughs> All in favor, let us know by the vote to aye. Aye. All opposed? Here, now that it's approved. Moving on to the point back. That's what kind of plan was. State of Barnes, Morgan, Wisconsin. The mail is recommended by the planning board to reappoint. Is there a motion to reappoint? Assembly. Question. All in favor, let it be known by the vote to aye. Aye. All opposed? There are none. They are reappointed. Says from County Board of Judges. This is our cover. Recommended to be reappointed for the Board of Adjustment. Is there a motion to reappoint? Assembly. Question. All in favor, let it be known by the vote to aye. Aye. All opposed? There are none. Before that, Mr. Chair, just uh, one report. That's right. You do have a planning for report. You'll see in there that they did take action to make those recommendations for the reappointments as well. Uh, you have their minutes from their May 17th meeting. And I think it needs to be brought to our attention now for this release. No, sir. I have to answer any questions that you might have. Hearing none, is that what's to approve? Go ahead. Questions? All in favor, let me know how to vote to aye. Aye. All opposed, and none. They are approved. Contracts are approved. approved. And then you vote to the board's attention. Uh, no, sir. You'll notice that these are all uh, for program and services contracts for the Department of Social Services to begin in FY22. Motion to approve. Got it. Question. All in favor, let me know how to vote to aye. Aye. All opposed, and none. They are all approved. Any questions from the board? There are none. Moving on to minus report. Anything in your report to be brought to the board's attention? Um, I would just note that I did include some additional information uh, here regarding the American Rescue Plan funds. This is, I thought, a well done uh, executive summary by the National Association of Counties. Very complicated uh, program is coming our way. Staff and I are working on. Uh, sort of sitting through all of the information, but wanted to try to keep you all um, up to date, at least as the generalities of, of what, uh, of how these funds uh, can be used. Uh, also having here an updated uh, sales tax update, um, we have it now uh, through uh, the month of April receipt, which would have been uh, for February's collection. Um, so you'll see where we are trending there for this year. Uh, and finally, under my report, um, we, we do have a request to designate a, a voting delegate from among uh, you Board of Commissioners for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners annual conference that will be this fall. And so you will need to submit a voting delegate for the fall conference. I think I'm on this year. <laughs> okay. But I nominate Ms. Harris. <laughs> <laughs> We can decide that tomorrow. Yes, sir. I know, I know that is us. Yeah, she's normally that delegate. She's she yeah. usually yeah. yes. Is there a separate is there a separate yeah. question? All in favor of you know about the vote. All right. All the votes. I think I'm going to do it.